Hello. Welcome to episode 80 of Maine Politics, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Strider 2 for PS1. This is one of the gems that I downloaded. Um, it's on a lot of people's like top 20 PS1 gems or obscure games. Um, I could totally see why. It's a really cool game. I really like uh, the era of Capcom games when they mix 2D sprites with 3D backgrounds. Uh, like really appeals to me for some reason. And this game really sort of hits that mark in a really cool way because it's like a, I guess you'd call it a 2.5D side scroller uh, that has 3D backgrounds. And it's it's kind of a nice mixture. Um, yeah, that's what we're going to play today. So it was between this and Rakugaki Showtime. And uh, people voted for this. So playing this today. Hey, everybody. Great to see you. Great to see everybody. LNF. It's why. What happens when you click the Discord link, LNF? Um, what is not working for you? What does it do? Uh, so I, in case you didn't notice, I did put a Discord chat invite in the descriptions now for these live streams. And uh, those... That should be working. It's an invite link to it. Um, but if anyone has any trouble with it, let me know. So, yeah, if you guys did not hear. Oh, weird. Invalid invite. I'm sorry to hear that, LNF. Um, ah, they're temporary. They expire every so often. Okay. So, because of that, I'm going to. I'll create a new invite code right now. So let's see if this works. I'm going to try sending it. So putting it in the chat right now. Hi, John. No, the apocalypse is not over yet, unfortunately. It is not over yet. Um, so, okay, yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to put a new one in each uh, link, or in each show I do. Um, so I see somebody, people in the chat already heard that I am going on office hours, uh, with Tim Heidecker, um, and Doug Pound tonight at 8 p.m. And, uh, I don't know if Vic Berger's going to be there, uh, but it'll be, it's going to be awesome. And I'm super excited about it. Uh, it's fucking crazy actually. And, um, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of like speechless about it. I'm just like sort of woke up with all this adrenaline today. Um, you know, just nervous about it. And, you know, from like the moment I woke up. So um, definitely probably the biggest podcast or like media appearance I've ever been on. Uh, John Gold, um, Tim and Eric are... In terms of like modern sketch comedy, modern comedy, um, they're probably like two of the most genius or sort of weird characters <laughs> that do comedy. Uh, Tim and Eric show, awesome show, is like, um, was hugely influential. I mean, a lot of other shows and things probably wouldn't exist if it weren't for it. Um, like, even though Sam Hyde of Million Dollar Extreme, like, turned against Tim and Eric at a certain point, their shit was just, like, a total ripoff of, like, Tim and Eric initially, um, you know, so. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Hey, Adam. Good to see you. Hey Shane, good to see you again. I haven't seen you in here in a while. I don't think I have, so I'm glad this. I mean, I've, if I haven't, I haven't been paying attention. But yeah, Bird. Um, Tom goes to the mayor was actually uh, a show Abby introduced me to years ago. I don't remember when, but it was. She showed me Tom goes to the mayor, and I was like, "Wow, what is this really weird show? This is this is really bizarre," and. Uh, like a year or two later, I remember sending her the Tim and Eric awesome show stuff. And she's like, oh, don't you remember? I, these are the guys from Tom Goes to the Mayor. And I was like, 
oh shit you're right i did, totally didn't make the connection like when the tim and eric awesome show came out i just wasn't aware of that it was the same people behind it um but yeah it's it's great Binary feedback. I saw Neil Hamburger and Tim live in San Francisco doing on cinema live. And um, it was it was like a conceptual performance art show is the only way I could describe it. Because what they did was they made the audience, they subjected the audience to like a two hour long terrible movie about how all the rock stars of the 1960s were assassinated. And the movie... The only interesting part about this movie they showed, and it's a real movie. It's not like done as a joke. It was a real movie. I can't remember the name of it, but it shows Janis Joplin, Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix, like all being assassinated in different ways. And the movie just sort of leading up to their assassinations. <laughs> um, and uh, I guess the most impressive thing to me was, you know how you can watch Tim and Greg Turkington, Neil Hamburger, that's his real name, do the on cinema stuff, like without breaking character, like the, the just pure sarcastic, like, uh, you know, like fake character stuff. The most impressive part of seeing them live was that how seeing how they could not break character, um, like how good they were at not breaking character in front of a live audience. And there was maybe like one or two times, very slight times where Tim almost broke. And it was hilarious to watch because it was like so dialed in and so good. Like I really didn't think of Tim Heidecker as being that kind of performer until I saw him live. Because it's hard to tell when you're watching on TV. Um, but now it's like after seeing that show, I was like, oh, he's definitely like Sasha Baron Cohen level, like committed uh, I mean, to actually like be able to troll a live audience for two and a half hours straight, three hours basically, and stay in character. Um, I think it's pretty difficult to do for any comedian, really anybody. So, Adam Karkowski, uh, that's the point of Neil Hamburger. I don't know if you're aware of this, but the whole point of Neil Hamburger is he bombs on stage. That's the that's the bit is he is supposed to be just like a very abrasive and bombing comic who brings on like molt like sometimes he'll, so he'll bring like a cocktail on stage is sort of one of the gags of, um, of Neil Hamburger. And then sometimes it'll develop into him like, like holding like under his elbow or his his shoulder, <laughs> like like five cocktails and they're just like spilling all over the place. Um it, to me, it's a hilarious concept, but I don't think a lot of people, they necessarily get the joke, even if they know, even if they're in on the joke, um, it's definitely like not for everybody, but I think it's, I think he's brilliant. I mean, he's definitely like one of the older school people doing this. Um, one of the more fun I think actually the first time I ever saw Neil Hamburger was on a Tim and Eric sketch where it was a weird sketch where it was like they were driving it was like Neil Hamburger was their driver and they were driving he was driving Tim and Eric somewhere and during the drive, Neil Hamburger just starts rant, ranting about how Eric is a rapist. And Eric just says, sir, I don't think it's it's rude to call me a rapist. That was inappropriate or something like that. And then Neil Hamburger just turns from the front seat and just looks at Eric and says, well, then don't rape. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I always remember that line as fucking hilarious to me and it's like playing they're like playing like the curb your enthusiasm music in the background or something like during the sketch it's a weird sketch um 
Yeah, Tony Clifton too. Like, have you guys seen Tony Clifton performing since Andy Kaufman died? It's it's weird. Um, like, I watched a performance of his where he went on stage at some crowd work show that Jay, Big Jay Okerson used to host for that network CISO. It's called What's Your Fucking Deal, I think. I don't know if you guys remember, there was a streaming comedy network called CISO that bombed. Um, but it was actually not a terrible channel while it existed. Yeah, JNNX, you're right. Yeah, it is. JNNX says the music is actually from French comedy from the late 1960s. Um, yes. Uh, the, so this, on this weird crowd work show, um, Tony Clifton, whoever was playing Tony Clifton just starts calling like black people who are sitting in the audience, the N word, like from stage. And I was just like, Whoa, like it wasn't even. And it wasn't, it didn't even elicit any laughter, like a lifted like gasps from the audience. It was, um, it was weird. So actually that's like my only reference point for Tony Clifton outside of the world of Andy Kaufman since Andy Kaufman died. It's too bad too that Jim Carrey, like even though maybe that there's parts of that movie that are decent, um, it was, it's just ruined by the fact that Jim Carrey is like crazy egomaniac. <laughs> um, Big J Okerson is funny. The bastard palace. He's like, a um, his, his style, he does a lot of crowd work. So like, if you go see him live, he, he most of the time just like riffs on the crowd. Like he doesn't, he doesn't have like pre planned material a lot of the time. Um, which is definitely like a skill in and of itself. I mean, but I think, uh, I've only really seen, I mean, I think he only has like one stand up special that's not like that. Like all the other stuff of his that's out is sort of crowd work style. Wait, what? No. Michael Brook? That's, that can't be true. Bird World, this, that's shocking news. Before I read it on the chat, please provide a link. That's, that is crazy. Um, Wow. Wow. Um, I'm sorry. I, I need to verify this because that's... Oh, my gosh. What? What? Wow. Holy fuck. Oh my God. Oh, I don't. Wow. Sorry, guy. I'm just, I can't believe it. Oh my God. I don't even, I, I mean, obviously I'm curious what happened. I mean, I was just watching his show, uh, like last week. Oh my God. I, it really makes you think I mean just someone dying that young so unexpectedly 
it just really makes you realize how <laughs> I guess how short our time is here. I mean, Jesus Christ. How sad. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Shane, it's unfortunately it's true. Majority report FM Twitter account just posted it. Yeah, it's confirmed, Ned. It's confirmed. That's scary, too. I mean, what, what kind of medical condition can you just die suddenly from at that age? You know, it just makes you think, like, what? Oh, if you guys just want to talk about him and like remember him now, I mean, I'm fine with changing the podcast to that because this, I just don't know how I'm going to talk. I mean, honestly, <clears throat> yeah, I don't, I don't know how I can sort of have a casual main politics today. So, um, if you guys want to talk about him and remember anything about him post it here I mean <clears throat> need to take a second Wow, okay. Well, Shane um, says, <clears throat> well, for me, he was someone I listened to every week for the last two years of his show in Majority Report. I've learned a lot from him, especially about American imperialism. I mean, unbelievable. <clears throat> well, I, I guess it makes me happy that he was able to put out his book. Um, 
that, you know, he probably had some other projects in the works, I'm sure. You know, I'm sure someone who's written a book probably has <clears throat> their next book sort of already brainstormed or, you know, n notes or ideas and Wow. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I ribbed Michael Brooks a few times, you know, about some of his politics that I didn't agree with. and But there's no doubt that his contribution was incredibly valuable. I mean, God... He was like one half of the, one half of the, you know, the sort of Sam Cedar majority report, you know, smackdown on like the Dave Rubens of the world and stuff. And, you know, that's important. It's like to make someone like Dave Rubin just a total fool. It's actually like really important to do that, to show people how much of a fraud he is, you know. They were actually both starting to, and hopefully Sam continues to do this, but they were both really starting to go hard against the Weinstein brothers too. And that was actually what I was going to talk about on this podcast today. So God. Yeah, Ned, me too. I thought Michael Brooks, he did a wonderful job debunking Sam Harris, debunking people like that. Um, God. Well, if you guys have any... Um, information about how to reach out to his family or his colleagues in any way like even just to send a card or flowers or something uh pat pass that info on to me if you can i don't even know if abby knows yet i've Uh. R.I.P. Michael Brooks. Thank you, Bird. Yeah. Um, don't don't apologize at all for bringing the bad news in. I mean, geez. At least we can sort of all be here and talk about it, you know. God. I know this is going to be look bad, but I need I need to play a game right now or else I'm just going to start bawling. <laughs> And I'm sorry, guy. I don't want to do that on the stream. I know that I, I just don't want the rest of the stream to be me. So I'm just going to play a game for a little bit. I'll still chat with you guys, but very, very sad day. And wow, just as I sort of came onto the podcast talking about how excited I was for today. God, what a bummer. Well, let's, let's play a little bit of Strider 2. <laughs> 
So, yeah, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play some Strider 2 now. I think it'll be cathartic for me, John, to stay on right now. Um, I just need to distract myself for a second, but I'll still chat with you guys. Obviously, I'm not going to take this game too seriously. Can you, uh, does the sound okay? Oh, fuck. One cool thing about this game is that it has, like, um, almost like a super move thing where it's like, like, they do, like, a multiple hit combo. But I think it actually takes away from my life bar, which just sucks, so... Whoops. Terrorist. Terrorist. Yeah, this game is cool. I mean, it's it's got a nice aesthetic, you know, for being a a 3D 2D hybrid. I mean, look how cool this is. I mean, and I would say gameplay-wise, I actually prefer it to the original Strider. I think they made some improvements on the style of the game. Um You know, it looks like, is it the same Strider sprite from Marvel vs. Capcom that they use in this, or is it a different one? Because remember, he's in um, Mar Marvel vs. Capcom. So it's like the Gunstar Heroes enemy from yesterday. Look at that. Speak of the devil. Why does that look exactly like the Gunstar Heroes enemy? Where is he? Disappear? Where is he? I'm a really big fan of these of this style of game. So if you guys know of any like 2.5D style platformers like this, let me know. I really, I really dig it. Um, Ned, um, Strider 2, is there a Strider 2 for Genesis? Because if so, it's actually not made by Capcom, which is bizarre, uh, that they they licensed the Strider property to another company. I believe it's called, I can't remember the name of it. Um, 
So they're actually two Strider 2s, and they're both completely different games. Oh, Strider 1. Yeah, Strider 1 for the Genesis net is very is a pretty close port of the arcade game of Strider. The Precursor says, what console was this? This is PlayStation 1. Well, I'm obviously still absolutely devastated. Um, this game didn't make me feel as good as I thought it would, so I guess I'm just going to just finish off the broadcast by just chatting with you guys. <clears throat> Let me see. Oh, man. He, he just put out a video seven hours ago. He just, and he also just brought on somebody to talk about the Jakarta method, which um, seems like a really uh, interesting take right now about what's going on with Trump and sort of the political climate. Um, so even if you disagree with some of the things he say, he's still doing really important work. I mean, it's, oh, geez. Sorry, I'm just like browsing Twitter right now to see. I think, I mean, incredible. Well, a lot of people are, I mean, he seems to have a lot of love out there, you know, which is nice. He made it, he made a, an impact on people's lives. He touched a lot of people. Yeah, the precursor, pre, um, precursor. Uh, Genesis did have a, the closest arcade port. But you know what's funny is uh, Genesis wasn't allowed, or Capcom was not allowed to make Genesis games for several years. Uh, they had an exclusive licensing deal with Nintendo. And I don't think it was until, I don't remember what it changed it, but I think that like the actual licensing lasted for a really long time. Uh and Strider might have been one of the first ones they converted. Yeah, I mean... This is going to hit the whole community extremely hard. People are going to be. This is this is hitting. This is going to hit everybody hard. I mean, I did not, Ned. I didn't see it. Well, if he had any children, if he had a wife, I mean, obviously he has his parents or one of his parents are still alive, I think, based on that statement. My heart obviously goes out to them the, the most. I mean, oh, God. 
it's just I guess what's so sad is I feel like he was sort of like on his way to becoming much bigger much more recognized it was sort of like I think he had finally gotten out from under the sort of the majority report umbrella and really made a name for himself and I'm just glad that his that his contribution will be recognized Yeah, Adam, I mean, anytime anyone politically controversial who's challenging some aspect of the status quo dies suddenly, I can understand sort of a conspiratorial or thought like that. It's just too early. We don't know anything. I mean, I I try not, I, I'm trying right now just to sort of channel my own shock and trauma about this without going to those places because for me it's just not helpful on an emotional level um so i i mean i understand i empathize with why you're thinking that kind of thought but i mean there's also really no evidence to suggest that michael rupert did not kill himself um most of the people who surrounded him you know have verified that that was indeed what happened so um Jesus. And no, I'm in case anyone's not seeing the chat, someone asked <clears throat> if anyone's getting Michael Rupert vibes, I think implying, you know, um, yeah, Adam Kirk, I, I understand Adam. I'm not trying to like shame you for, for it. Yeah, Adam, I'm pretty convinced, too. I'm pretty convinced. I mean, he did seem to be suffering. If we're talking about Michael Rupert, he did seem to be suffering from s forms of big-time depression. I'm not a psychologist, but if you watch his last few media appearances, he go he sort of goes into crying jags. Um, he was definitely ungrounded at a certain point. And I don't know if it had something to do with how much peyote and psychedelic um, ritualistic stuff he was doing. But my, t my take on that is if you're already in a bad place, you're already depressed, and you're not already experienced with psychedelics, um, getting into psychedelics could actually exacerbate and sort of accelerate uh, your depression. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but I know that he kind of turned, he, he sort of turned very strongly towards like psychedelic experimentation. Um, bird worldist. I'm going to retweet Abby right now. Wow. Wow. That is Russell. It says, oh my God, is this true? I talked to Michael just a few days ago. It says, it looks like it's true. God damn it. He was in his 30s. I have much to say about Michael, but I can't right now.
Abby says, gutted to learn I lost my friend Michael Brooks today. He was not only an amazing journalist and passionate fighter for justice, he was funny. He was funny, genuine, and selfless. Please tell people how much they are loved and supported because you might got, not get another chance. And she ends it by saying, my heart hurt so much. I mean, I know this is going to sound silly, but maybe this is a, maybe somehow in some weird way, this horrible tragedy will make people on the left come together. The people who care the most about stopping all this bullshit. <sighs> and just all the bickering, you know, everybody does with each other. I'm so guilty of it, you know. It's like, maybe we can sort of use this moment to come together. When the ghost ship fire happened, in Oakland, 36 people died. Three people that I knew died. Uh, it was a horrible tragedy, but there was, people came together in a way that I had never really seen before. From people in the community. People in the music scene. And yeah, it didn't last forever. And, and you know, it kind of came and went but the solidarity was you could feel it you it was palpable it did feel like everybody was in that together it was a shared tragedy and it was also a time for everybody to sort of get together and collaborate and try to figure out ways to make the scene better make the scene safer you know and I think a lot of people really wanted, you know, they wanted to do something positive out of that horrible situation. So, it's, So, so yeah, I mean, he was, he was the real deal, you know, doesn't matter if you don't see eye to eye with him politically, he was authentic. That's one, I think that's one thing you can really gather from his work. And there aren't that many people out there left who are, you know, that's the problem, I think. It's like, you guys, I think you guys can see it, most of the people in here, but you know, it's, you know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of people in this scene who are just not authentic. There's a performative nature to what they do. They've chosen very carefully what sort of their grift is or what their angle is. And they're just not authentic people speaking their mind, you know. And Michael Brooks was one of those guys. And that's so important to have somebody who's that educated, that passionate, that serious, and also that authentic to actually I, yeah, it's so 
like Abby said, <clears throat> don't hesitate to tell the people you love and that you care about and they're important to you how much that you they've touched you. Because you might not get a ch another chance tomorrow. So, yeah, Ned Ryerson. I did. I actually was. Well, it's funny because I just was watching him interviewing some of the people from Come Town, which was kind of fun to know that he listens to that podcast too. And I mean, it just. Yeah. Oh, well. I guess I, I kind of, uh, I feel like I should end it here. But thank you again, everybody, for joining me. Sorry, this is sort of a weird and tragic episode, unexpectedly. It's, I'm, I, I'm more sorry that Michael Brooks is not here with us anymore because that is the ultimate tragedy. Who gives a shit about this stupid show? Um, but thank you guys for being here, you know? I mean, and yeah, Furious, you're absolutely right. Brooks was just getting started. He was. He was. Hey, Michael. Thanks, man. Um, hope to see you soon. And uh, let's... I, I don't know if I'm... Did I, let's see. I might do this. Well, actually, no. I'm still going to do it on Wednesday. I'll definitely do this on Wednesday. Um, just want to plug some things, which just sounds so crass to do now. But I'm I'm going on office hours with Tim Heidecker tonight at 8 p.m. Um, that's happening live. I think it'll be a live stream on YouTube. Uh, if you don't catch the live stream, it'll definitely be come out as a podcast later. Um, and, uh, what else? Uh, I guess that's it. Um, so yeah, go, go check out his channel. If you don't, if you don't know who he is, go check out his stuff. So you can understand why we're all so sad today. Maybe some of you haven't heard of Michael Brooks or have seen his stuff. Um, but do that, do yourself a favor and check his work out, check out what people are saying about him and do not hesitate to tell the people that you love and that you care about how important they are to you. So thank you everybody for tuning in to episode 80 of Maine Politics. And everybody stay safe and healthy out there. Go to the doctor. You know? I mean, I have no idea what happened, but... It's really giving me pause. And not neglecting to get regular checkups and... So, take care, everybody. Love you guys. Stay safe. Be well. And we'll talk again on Wednesday. Take care.